Yes, yes, yes. Prepárense por otro episodio de Survival of the Fittest is the Soup du Jour con Chef Treviño. Te lo digo, estamos viviendo unos tiempos bastante duros, pero ¿sabes qué? We are having a good time, and that's what's important here. Keep in mind that, you know, you know, I'm going to be honest with all of y'all from the get-go, okay? I got a, a, a Buchanan in my hand, you know, and I'm enjoying it because I'm doing my shots of Buchanan between my shots of Orlando Brewing with their Pilsner, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. So thank you to Orlando Brewing for bringing us this beer for our podcast today. But I'm at my house today, okay? I mean, sometimes we grabamos, you know, we, we record at a restaurant, sometimes we record on the street. Today we're at my house, and my dog is being so bad. <laughs> so get ready for all of that, because she is being too much. That Luna is too much. Now, Cappy is chilling, but Luna's too much. She's like like trying to tear up a couch. Like, get off there, girl. Whatever. All right. Mom Palante, gente, welcome back. Now, let's talk about some food. Let's talk about some great stuff. I tell you what. This week, I had a great time because this week we started our, our, our a show we're doing for Mega TV called uh, Kana. Just say it right. Kana Life. Coño, how can I forget that? I was going to say Kana Vibe. Estoy <laughs> mal. Kana Life. And I tell you what. The show is rad, all right? We're, we're doing recipes with um, CBD, with flor, and with some, uh, what I, you know, with, 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 uh, <laughs> sometimes I forget all these terminology, the terminology for all this modern, you know, marijuana, you know, and, and health kick. Because, you know, now that, that, that there's legal with, as far as like, if you need it you know, medically, well, you know, it's good. And people are really, really, really into it. And I think it's, it's a positive thing. You know, one thing, I've always been a big advocate of the green, you know, of that movement. And I think it's positive. And I think doing a show where we're cooking with CBD, you know, floor... It allows us to, like, do some great stuff. I mean, I, I put together some great recipes. And you know what's the best thing about eating the flour is that it's it's got a strong effect, <laughs> you know, where you're, like, cooking with it and you're making brownies, cookies. And that's the standard, right, brownies and cookies. But what about, like, making, like, a great pasta dish with, you know, the CBD where we're not only, not only that, you know, it tastes great, but it also has elements that make you very, very relaxed and comfortable, if you get my drift. All right, so it's been very exciting to start this show. We've done four episodes. We're working on five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We're going to do a whole season of these. And we hope that in Puerto Rico, you in Orlando, and by the way, I just want to say hi to everybody back in Puerto Rico porque la isla es la isla, and I love it. And I'm saying hi to all my friends who are listening. We've had a lot of people responding very positively to the podcast. Amigos, amigas, todo mundo en Puerto Rico, los quiero, saludos. Y estamos haciendo ese show en Mega TV, Cocinando con CBD. El kind of life, ya tú sabes, the good life. Gente, we're talking about the good life, all right? So send me some messages about how you like to either cook with, uh, you know, la flor, la, la flor que te mantiene calmado, calmada, lo que sea. Let me know what you're thinking because I want to know. And you know what? Tag me. Give me your name, and I will, I will mention you in the show. I will say, like, Esta receta viene de fulano. Esta receta viene de doña fulana. 
<laughs> because la doña también saben. You know what? We're at a time in, in our lives where like a doña may have smoked more pot than you ever have because that's the era we're living in now, you know? And, you know, people say to me, like, Trevino, what are you talking about, cabrón? Pero it is what it is, you know? Nice sips of Orlando Brewing's IPA this evening. This evening, aquí in Lake Nona, al frente del lago. I think it's called Buck Lake. I'm not sure. Maybe. Whatever. Pero al frente del lago, Luna Llena, by the way. And you know, and you know how I feel about the Luna Llena. I think we've talked about this before. You know, uh, it's got me kind of wild tonight. So, prepárense que estamos calientes, Puerto Rico. Orlando and the subcontinent and everything in between. Uh, hey, and that includes California, Texas, New York, uh, Illinois, este, mis amigos in Georgia, mis amigos aquí en Flo la Florida, que Florida está caliente últimamente, déjame decirte. Okay, we got a new president. Things are looking, you know, fair. Pal carajo. Vamos a estar como que juzgando jamás. Vamos para adelante. You know, all I got to find is the angles now. What are the angles to keep not only a positive vibe amongst our community y, 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 y como buscarle la vuelta, tú sabes, para todos nosotros, seguir para adelante, o sea de Colombia, o de México, o de Venezuela. And let's, you know what, I'm going to say it straight up. I don't like to get too political, but when it comes to like communist, I get a little bit of un... <laughs> Unhinged. So, pal carajo este Maduro y pal carajo el Castro hermano y todo esto de Cuba. Free that shit. All right. Enough said about that. Pero, all of our friends here in Orlando, you know, les, les mando saludos. A land show only means hotness. So, envíanos todas tus recetas. And you know what? I think we need to, like, because we're getting close to February. And February means one thing the 14th. Dia de San Valentín. The lovers, the lovers, the lovers. Toda la gente que están buscando pasarla bien con su pareja en el día de los enamorados. 14 the 14th Valentine's motherfucking day. We love it. Oops. Beep. <laughs> Send us your recipes. Whether it be a drink, whether it be a dish, or whether it be tu mejor labia, your best rap that you can share with your lover. We want to hear it. And we want to share it with you. So send it to my Instagram. You remember, follow us on Patreon as well. Patreon's got some very special things that we don't offer here. We offer one-on-one -on -one recipes. We offer one-on-one -on -one good things like... Olvídate de good things, okay? Good times. Como esto, pero mejor todavía. So follow our Patreon and keep following us here and giving us likes on YouTube, giving us likes on like, on like, like, like Spotify. I mean, because Spotify is huge. I mean, when I said that, when Spotify hooked us and they said like, oh, we want you on our web, uh, you know, we want you on web on, on Spotify. I was like, what? Seriously? So gigante gente. So I'm stoked. We're rolling with it. We're going to enjoy it while it lasts. Y vamos a seguir cocinando. The show is awesome. You know, everyone who knows me knows that I'm an advocate of the green spice. The green spice is a wonderful part of our lives. I was born and raised in California. I, I had the privilege of living in Mexico, privilege of living in the Europe, and privilege of living in the great continent de Puerto Rico. And all these things have allowed me to really become a great cook, you know. So I got to be very, very, very thankful. Today is like one of those days, you know, hey, Buchanan, Flor, Full Moon. I can't guarantee any results for this podcast other than, uh, oh, of course, in Chicho Severino. Today, we're listening to Chicho Severino, who I am a, an absolute fan of, a great bachata. Because when it comes to bachata, and I love bachata. I mean, I love rancheras, I love salsa, I love merengue, but I love bachata. 
And when it comes to bachata, I absolutely love Chicho Severino. <laughs> this guy, this guy has got this weird style of like talking about life. You know, the same way that corridos, Mexican corridos, talk about like life and bandits and shit like that. You know, the, the bachatas talk about like dancing and loving, you know, and I love that about the bachatas. They talk about just life and so. Tonight I've been just sort of like laying in the background unofficially, <laughs> unofficially, okay. Tengo ahí a Chicho Severino tocando buenas bachaticas, okay. <laughs> you know what I love about Orlando? Orlando has become such a great Latino city. And you know, unlike, uh, okay, well, how can you say you don't love going to like a place like Cartagena, which is Cartagena or Bogota? Or, or even Caracas, or San Juan, or Santo Domingo, or La Habana, or Miami, coño. But Orlando is becoming the newest, you know, I mean, hey, I lived in California. San Jose, California became a super melting pot of Latin and Asian culture. It was wild. You know, I've seen a lot of different places, but Orlando in particular is becoming such a Latino city. I absolutely I love it. That it's becoming so Latino que tú puedes ir a comprar, tú sabes, te vas a la mexicana, como decimos nosotros. La, vete a la mexicana y cómete el pan dulce. O, 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 o vete allí a donde, tú sabes, la lechonera y tráete como dos do, do libras de, de lechón. That's Orlando 2021. And, you know, olvídate del covid because it's there, and we're all dealing with it, and, w and we've learned to live with it. But now, you know, things have kind of shifted. Things have changed. Places that weren't so exciting are now exciting. Places that weren't so easy to get to are most accessible now because of the COVID. And that, I believe, believe it or not, all right, uh, I'm going to just say it straight up. Can the COVID have something to do with Orlando becoming even more of a Latino city? I'm going to say yes. Because we are leading the charge saying, you know what? I'm going to respect the rules. I'm going to understand the risk, but I'm going to live my life. Porque así somos. Lands want to live life. And that's what maybe the COVID has done for Orlando is allowed Latins to kind of take a grip on this motherfucker called life and say, I own it. Y vamos pa'lante. That's what I like about Orlando today. It's an exciting Latin city and it almost feels like we're at the absolute beginning of it. I don't want to say cero because we can talk about El gran Rine Rosario con sus bailes de los ochentas who would bring Gilbertito Santa Rosa and different people here to, for, to Orlando to sing and, and, and for the, 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 the Boricua community to dance to in the 80s. We're talking about the early 80s, you know. You remember those movies. You watch those movies about the 80s, you know. Oh, yeah, mira, cabrón, yeah, viste. No, I, I'm telling you. That's what I'm talking about. And, yeah, we give our respect to that time in Orlando. But now it's, mm. it's, 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 it's different. Now it's, it's, it's big bucks. Vamos a hablar claro. It's big money involved here now. Porque I think the Latin community is one of the strongest economic, like, powerhouses that any city can have. If you have a large Latin community, you're going to have an, a strong economic force, all right? A, a, an economic force that, that we understand because we spend money. We spend money we don't even have. <laughs> Eso lo que me encanta. Gracias a nuestras, nuestros amigos de... Orlando Brewing, who always provide us with the great beer, ice cold. They gave me another keg. You know what? I don't know. Maybe this podcast will drive me to more, to, to, to being even more of a drinker. Because, hey, vamos a hablar claro, tú sabes. A mí me encanta 
conversar, pasarla bien. Yo no quiero que este podcast sea como que, oh, vente a escucharme. Nah, mi. Vente a parcial. <laughs> come party with me. Come have a good time. Let's talk. Let's discuss. Let's think. It's a full moon. I got, I, you know, I got the license tonight, everybody. Come on, give me a break. Not to mention, I'm enjoying, you know, some of my grade A brood here in Orlando. IPA cerveza. And I love it. Had a big steak tonight, by the way. Big steak in downtown Orlando. It's exciting. It was good. I had it at a place called House on Church Street. And you know I love Church Street. All right, you, you all know. If you know me from Orlando, you know I had a restaurant on Church Street. Que me fue. Me fue cabrón because we cooked well and we enjoyed cooking for our guests and we did well there with that. We partied hard. We really had a very unique vibe going. But you know that everyone can handle it. I sometimes murmullo. I sometimes mumble when the truth is not convenient for me. So... Yeah, it was a great restaurant. We had a blast. It had a basement. It was from 1846. Have I talked about this? Have I ever talked about this? I have. All right. Well, we wouldn't get too much into it then. So, I, you know, anyone who knows me here in Orlando knows that I like to have a good time. So, this podcast isn't going to be any m m m different. <laughs> Full moon, good times, and food. Now, let's just go back to the food show because the food show has been the highlight, I'd have to say, of my month. And thanks to, to Havoc Media, my bro Rick, who, like, and I've been calling him Richard lately. <laughs> and also, and let me tell you what else, Acantra so I've been calling him Shug. <laughs> We are really doing some exciting stuff. The TV is coming, online is on fire, and this podcast, I, this is my favorite place because I can just really cut loose. Everyone else wants to control me. Hey, say this. Oh, hey, viste, I told you it would be like this. But it's fun. But the podcast is where I just feel like I just kind of cut loose. And, you know, I'm here at my house today. You know, it's it's actually not during the day. Let's see what time is it. It's 9.30 on a Tuesday. You know, taco motherfucking Tuesday. So. And honestly, the best thing I have going is this, this podcast. Because even though, you know... It's on demand. I still feel like the connection is almost a live connection. There's sort of synergy between me here on the mic and then thankfully and so humbly, I, I love it, spread out amongst all these different platforms for you to listen to and for you to connect. And I, I really need you to connect so that so that we can really, I mean, it's not, it's not my podcast, it's the podcast. And that's what I, I've always approached my restaurants the same way. You know, some people say like, oh, no, 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 it's about you. No, it's about us. You know, us has become kind of the new thing. We're like, it's been shocking lately. <laughs> Let's face it, you know, politics have been shocking regardless of your politics, the facts are they're shocking for all of us. We just, uh, we watch these guys and these people in Washington and you say to yourself like, whoa, what happened? You know, so it's like, <laughs> we're definitely living some wild times, you know, e and the economy, you know, and the COVID has just, just, just changed everything. The, the, the reset is so like in our face, you know, that and you know what? I, and I'm really I'm willing to 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 kind of recognize 
the the whole the whole the whole reset you know i think that as a as a businessman and truly as a culinary businessman where my angle is always going to be food or drinks and mostly food because i'm a chef you know i think that this is you know and you know what hey let me let me be honest with y'all because yeah. you know it happens you know i've had great restaurants very successful restaurants and they kind of met their day when they absolutely become not a successful restaurant where they lose money and get to the point where they're not sustainable and you have to close them you know or when your you know your your landlords or whatever you know come down on you and they make running the the, the restaurant very difficult the nickel and the nickels game you know i call it the nickels game because Really, it's about nickels. People don't get it, you know. You know, you you can charge 150 bucks on a check, but what are you keeping of that check? You know, that's the next question. But the truth is, you know, the restaurant business is sort of addictive, you know. And if you're in it, you know what I'm saying. You know, it's like uh, I can't do anything else. I absolutely adore just the biz, the b i z biz, and that's what always forces us to come back to do it so you know it, it's what i absolutely adore and we have to do our best to make it exciting you know so that when you do meet that final moment in life when you're just kind of going like i mean you know who wants to face this reality but sometimes you say to yourself like you know what yeah that happens and you meet that end, you want to be able to say, you know, you want to be able to say you lived a great spiritual life, of course. You lived a great moral life, yes, whatever, <laughs> to some extent, right? But you want to be able to say that you left a legacy. And, and you know, I think places like restaurants and, 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 and kitchens become so sacred it becomes so real, you know. It becomes so, like, so important to people that you want to be able to go out from this mortal coil, this race that we run every fucking day, you know. We want to be able to say, like, hey, you know, I did something. I did something exciting. And you know what? The restaurant business allows me to say that. It's not like rocket science, but it's sacred. And yes, it's not easy and requires a ton of sacrifice. So it makes it as real as real gets. And I love that about the biz. So, chefs, restaurateurs out there, always remember this is like what we do. We want to impress people. We want to excite people. We want to make people love us we want people to come absolutely to absolutely accept our vision whether it be ah, what do i want to say here whether it be wh whether it makes sense because sometimes i tell you as a chef you know sometimes we look at at food and we look at <laughs> what we think people need to eat not want to eat, but need to eat. We want you to be inspired by these dishes. Eh, sometimes it's not all that. So <laughs> it's a great business. You should be very thankful if you are a chef, if you're a restaurateur, if you're struggling. I got you. I got you. I understand what you're going through. And you know what? It's all good. You know, you could have it all, you could lose it all, you can you can you can dig yourself out of this hole into the next hole. The restaurant business is tough. But sacred indeed, my brothers and sisters, I salute you. And with that I like to tell you, remember that survival of the fittest is the soup du jour. I'm Roberto Trevino. I'm here in Lake Nona tonight, full moon. Y les pido que se inspiren todos los días, be inspired every day, and God bless. We'll see you soon. Nos vemos.